Hello everyone. Welcome to Retrospect channel. Myself Karthik Pondaswamy. I hope you guys watched the previous video which explains about what is a class in Java and now this is a time to learn what is object in Java. So this video we are going to get in and out of object in Java. So let's say what is an object in Java. So first of all object is nothing but a real time entity what we define in our real life. So basically in Java object is nothing but an instance of a class which means that uh, whatever the class contains, the object what we create for the particular class, this object also contains the same thing. So what does the class contains? Class contains nothing but the properties, which are nothing but the variables and methods. Similarly, an object also contains the same variables and methods. So object in Java contains a state and behavior. So state is nothing but which is relates to the properties, which are like, you know, the variables what we define in our class. And similarly, the behavior is nothing but it relates to the methods what we define in a class. So, okay, this is fine about what is an object, but why do we need to get an object in Java, right? That's a basic question we should have, right? So let's say I have a classroom, which is a closed one. Let's say I have a classroom, which is closed one. This is a classroom. This is closed one and I have some materials inside, which is some benches and there is a board. Let's say I have a board. I have benches, right? And I want to get uh, access to this, uh, you know, uh, materials inside classroom, and I want to get outside of this classroom. But the problem here is that this classroom is a closed one, right? So how can I get that? So what you can do is you can create a door. You can create a door for yourself. Let's say this is a user one, and I can go inside using this door. And I can go and get these details, right? Get these materials and get out, right? And similarly, if someone wants to get access to these materials, like the benches and board, how we can create it? He can create similarly another door. And let's say this is user two, right? And he can go and get these uh, materials from inside the class into outside by using this particular door, and he can get it, and then he can come out. So here I can relate this classroom. This classroom is nothing but a class. And these benches and board, I can define it as a properties. And this door, what we created here, is nothing but an object. This is object one, and this is object two. So the object which was created for this particular user of this particular access is only accessible only for this particular user it is not going to share for another user so basically object one is different object two is different so so by in simple way i can define if i want to get access to some uh, properties which are inside the class i can create an object and using that object i can go and get access to those uh, you know properties of a class so next time i'm going to uh, write a, a, a code where we can explain about how we can able to create an object of a class in java and you will get in and out of how it relates to the memory how we can how actually memory stores this object when we create an object in java let's see how we can able to create an object in java so let's say i have an example of class student where the student class contains a variable called name and there is a method called display just to display the name of this particular student okay and now i have a main method uh, main class where I'm going to write a uh, code where I'm going to create an object for this particular class. So basically, there are two types of memory we have within RAM. Basically, the uh, it is called stack. The first one we call it as stack. So that is called stack, and this stack contains name and value, and the other memory type is called heap. Okay, this is called heap memory. So this is called heap memory, this is called stack memory. So JVM, when we try to create an object, the JVM always creates a Java objects under heap memory. Okay, so the way how we can able to create an object is by using keyword new. So by using the keyword new, by using the new keyword, when I write a keyword called new, JVM understands that, it, so okay, the developer wants to create an object for a particular class. So it simply goes and creates an object in heap. Okay, 
So this is the objective data, right? But now JVM should know uh, uh, what type of object this belongs to, right? Well, this object belongs to which class, right? Because object is instance of a class, right? So this object contains whatever the class contains, right? So by using the constructor, I can tell JVM, hey, go and allocate whatever the uh, class contains, the same thing in uh, object. So by using constructor student, so this is the constructor. So this is the constructor. Constructor is nothing but the method name with the same as class name without any uh, defined inside, right? So by using this stu student of meaning that I am telling JVM, hey, go and allocate the memory for this particular object, this particular object with the same as whatever this student class contains. So what it actually does, it go inside this uh, object and it allocates, okay, name. And there is a method called display of, right? Because this class contains name and display of student class, right? That is why it is creating name and it allocates the memory for this particular object for storing name and display of method, okay? Now, we want to access this object, right, our program. For that, we have to use some a variable. So, to access an object, we call it as object reference. It's not a variable, it's a reference. So, let's say, I am saying, let's say S1, okay? So, JVM always stores the object references under stack memory. So, S1 will be stored under stack, okay? And this S1 is an object reference, which refers to this particular heap. But what is the type of this S1, which is nothing but it is storing the object of type student, right? So that is why this S1 is nothing but student type. So when we write student S1 is equal to new student R, so first it creates an object in heap by using the new keyword. Second thing, by using the constructor, JVM allocates the memory for this particular object for the based on the particular class. And then when we say S1, JVM creates uh, S1 in stack by using the equal operator, it is going to refer to this particular object. So this S1 is refers to this particular object. So the S1 will have some value. So stack will have name and value. For the stack, uh, for the stack name S1, it stores the value of uh, this object, okay? And of type student. So now let's see what is this value is, right? Because under heap memory, when JVM creates an object, it will have some address, right? Memory address, right? Let's say it is 100, right? So this address uh, 100 is nothing but it is called as hash code. Hash code in Java. So this hash code will be stored as value in the stack. So when I say S1, S1 will be stored in stack and this will be referred to this particular object. When I say S1 dot name is equal to, let's say Karthik. Right. So when the JVM executes this line by line by line from a top down approach, right? When it sees like you know S1 dot name is equal to Karthik, it goes and check in the stack. Okay, there is S1. Okay, for this S1, it refers to this particular object which is having the same hash code, and then it is going to assign the name as Karthik. So this name will be assigned as Karthik here. Now let's say I want to create another object. Okay, let's say student s2 is equal to new student of right so similarly the jvm creates another object Oops. okay jvm creates another object with same name and display because it is using student constructor right so then because of s2 Okay, there will be one more entry here. And let's say this has code, let's say 200. So this 200 will be stored here, right? So S2 is refers to this particular object, right? Now let's say if we say S2 dot name is equal to, let's say J. So then it is going to update this value name as J. So now, when let's say after we using our class, uh, you know, objects. Let's say if I am making this uh, object which is not referred to any uh, object references in stack. So let's say I am making this s one is equal to null. Let's say s one is equal to null. So meaning I am going to make this as null. 
so it means it is not going to refer to any of the object right so what it actually does in the real time so java has a beautiful feature of garbage collector right so that garbage collector is nothing but a program which always runs at the back background and it always checks for any objects which are created in heap which is not referred to any object reference in stack and it will wait for those uh, objects to see if it got referred by any other um, references in stack if it is not referred by any object references from stack then it will automatically you know uh, clear out uh, destroy this particular object under heap memory so this is called uh, garbage you know garbage character is doing the uh, object destruction so this is the way how we can create an object and garbage character will destroy this object that is called car uh, object destruction so it is very clear that when i want to create an object of a particular class i have to use the new keyword by using the new keyword i can able to create an object in heap memory by using the constructor and i can able to allocate the memory for a particular object because of i want to allocate the memory of our you know st student class right so that is why i'm using constructor of student so then when i'm assigning this object to a, a reference variable this object reference is stored under stack and that will be storing the uh, hash code of the particular object and similarly when i create another object and this is also similarly storing the hash code of second object too so if it is uh, something like you know um, if when i when any object is not referred to any of the object references in stack then garbage character will automatically go and destroy the particular objects in heap memory so this is called garbage um, object destruction and this is the way how we can able to create an object so if you guys have any questions about this video please post your comments in the comment section and if you guys like this video please hit the like button and also please you know share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel stay tuned stay tuned for the next videos uh, bye bye thanks for watching